Hi guys, uh, Trev here um, and welcome to the, the first lockdown piano lesson. Um, I'm just going to do sort of an introduction of a few things that beginners might do on piano. If you already have lessons with me, this is hopefully recapping and just some basic sort of um, technique stuff. Um, it's really good to get your technique um, as good as you can. So even um, those of you who are um, a little bit more advanced, just do like use this lesson and um, if you're new to piano, um, hopefully it might start sort of um, start you off in some ways. Um, so first of all, one of the things that um, kids struggle with a lot is trying to use all of their fingers. So I have kind of a lot of um, beginners and they just they might use kind of one, one or two fingers like that. And they might be a bit thumpy if they're, if they're children. Um, sometimes it's helpful to use the black keys because they're a bit wider but what we're really looking for is to use all of our fingers which is a lot harder than it sounds especially if you've not done any music or you've not used all of your fingers I mean even um, some old, older older students of mine um, you know who are retired retired if you've not really used sort of these fingers much then um, you're expecting a lot to sort of go straight for a, a piano and sort of trying to play um, you've got to build up the strength so um, first of all I just want to do an exercise where you squeeze your thumb and your um, your fingers together do two squeezes and maybe do the other way <laughs> so it's a bit like keep fit for fingers I haven't got a great name for this I'm calling it kind of crab fingers or spider fingers um, but um, slow is better and really squeeze guitarists could do this as well actually but um, pianists particularly need all of their fingers really strong okay um, so two on each couple of times would work I mean you can make up patterns if you want one two one three one four like that sort of thing um, you can play around but the, the key point is to use um, all of your fingers and particularly the weaker ones like if you're writing with a with a pencil for example you're going to use these fingers a bit more so they get strong your thumb is um is pretty strong and dexterous and your first finger and your second finger are pretty strong okay so um okay so you can be doing that you don't even need a piano um you can be doing that when you're sat at home bored or you're watching tv or or whatever um to build up some finger strength um i want to talk about books because um i've actually lent a couple of my books so I've ordered some more, but um, there's two methods that I recommend and you can kind of go either way. So there's Piano Time. This is actually Piano Time book two, but Piano Time book one obviously comes before that. Um, this is a great book for adults or older children. I don't think it's that great for younger children initially. So it's not the book that some of you have started with, but it's a great book. And certainly Piano Time and um, Pauline Hall's got um, a lot of kind of... Um, other other books as well that kind of complement it and it's a really um nice sort of um selection of songs the only thing with the book one is it does go quite fast i i, I tend to think it, it leaves younger students um behind quite quite fast if you see what i mean so um you you need more songs in the early early stages i think so there's another one called uh me and my piano um which is quite an old method and piano time's an old method too really but uh, me and my piano which a lot of the students have I've lent my book to, to someone on, on, on purpose, but I've ordered another one, so I've not got one to show you. But Me and My Piano is a great one if you've already got that. There's also some other ones, like I've got um, John, John Thompson's Easy um, Piano Course. There's a few different methods. To be honest, any method should, should be okay, but um, they're ones that I recommend. So Piano Time for Young Beginners, um, sorry, Me and My Piano for Young Beginners, and then moving on to Piano Time, um, would be great so um, do buy a method method book if you want sort of lessons um, the videos are good but you need a method book to go alongside it um, so um, I'm just going to do um, a little technique um, which I call with my students um, the butterfly um, so the butterfly is where first of all we put both our thumbs on middle C and um, I might actually move so with all these introduction um, lessons, I am doing them in single, sort of single take. Um, but later on, I will sort of cut, cut and splice them. But there's the piano, and if 
if my technology is great, I'll flip it the other way around. Okay, so, so this is the middle C, and I just want to see if we can do a butterfly, which is basically each finger in turn and then back. So you've got kind of a symmetry or a con contrary motion sort of feel. So we'll try again. One, two, three, four. Okay, and if we now try again, but this time let's do really slow on each on each note. So really slow. One, two, three, four. So practicing slowly is really important for the strength, just like we were doing before. Um, let's try fast. One, two, three, four. And then as, as, as fast as you can. Um, ready, steady, go. <laughs> um, okay, so um, there's another um, way you can do short staccato. So... Um, you can do them in your own time as well, but I'm just sort of giving you some some ideas to begin with on your piano. Um, so I didn't explain where middle C was, and some some um, some students um, struggle with this more than others. But the, the the C is sort of the way I think of it is next to the two black keys. You've got the C, um, and I quite like the the idea of the D being a, like a dog, a dog in a in a kennel perhaps. Well, that's how I was taught. So um, the C is is next to the two black keys. Okay. Um, what were we doing? Staccato. So, so staccato is short and legato is what we did to begin with, which was long, long notes. Um, okay, so um, not a lot more I want to do today, but I wanted to show you a scale um, of C major. So I want to try, actually just do one hand. So we're going one, two, three, and then thumb. Try that again. One, two, three, thumb. And then on the way back it goes over. Let's try it together. One, two, three, four. We just try the other hand. Um, let me just check something's come. You can close that. Can you see that note? Whoa, it's right at the edge. Okay. Um, so this is the left hand. So same idea. So that time the three went over. thing to try which is quite tricky is doing both hands together so they kind of like go under and over at different points and um, one two three four so that's really hard okay I'm just gonna put you back up <laughs> Um, hi again. Yeah, so um, that was just an introduction. As you can see, um, there's a lot in early um, stages about um, getting all of the fingers working and using all the keys. Um, and I know that some of the students have been doing some improvising on black keys with a drone, which is quite quite fun. You can kind of you can play. Um, actually, let me show you because it's quite fun. So if you get a drone in the left hand, maybe so a drone is just one one note and repeat it. And then the other hand can kind of improvise, which means make up. Ha. 
patterns just using black notes. And some of the students have also done an octave, which is the same note twice. Um, so um, that's probably probably for lesson um, another lesson, but um, just to give you some sort of ideas, um, just to get you started. And um, I hope that kind of keeps you going and um, kicks you off. If you've not um, done lessons with me, then please do buy a method book and then it becomes a lot easier to sort of work through where you're at. Um, I'm also starting um, Zoom calls. Um, quite a few people have had Zoom, Zoom lessons or, already, which are a one-to-one, -one, but um, these hopefully kind of tie in with that and um, you can watch this, watch these a few times over the week. Um, and I hope you find them useful. Okay, bye.